Greetings, y'all. It's your knock, Peter Mata, and welcome back to another Golf Stories podcast. I'm, of course, joined here by PGA Tour caddy, Daryl Atten, live on location once again this week. What's up, Daryl? How's it going? Hey, uh, good to be here. Yeah. It's been a, a great week overall. I'm, obviously, last week wasn't you know, the best in making the cut, but it's good to do another episode with you and mm-hmm. before I leave uh, tomorrow. Yeah, night of, night eve. Yeah, the night eve, we're getting <laughs> it in. And I don't know, what what episode are we on? Like, it's, is it 15? It's sweet 16. Sweet 16, yeah. look, it, it's, it's, it's going by, so mm-hmm. definitely keep it going and love it. Yeah, what a sweet week this has been. Uh, we'd love to have you, man. Dude. Not only myself, my family. Uh, yeah, talk about that. We, we just played golf yesterday. We tried to play golf today, brain good bit, but it's 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 been a great time, you know, spending time with Peter or with the Zurich Classic, just everything that's gone on this week. Again, besides not you know making the cut with DA and team, it's been great. Yeah, it's been a, a fun, fun week with you uh, here, getting to meet you in person, yeah, you know, for the first time, really, and hanging with you. It's been outstanding. Uh, yeah, dude, this guy's game here is it's solid. I know yeah, no, you might not think it is, but it's solid, solid. He hold a shot on us, number twelve yesterday. Yeah, 130, <laughs> 135, pitching wedge, eagle has landed. Yeah, yeah, uh, and also stuffed another one sixteen. So, I mean, you got some game, dude. Uh, don't don't sell yourself short. It's there's still a lot of work to do, but yeah. I'm excited moving forward. Yeah, likewise. Uh, didn't play. I was a little sloppy, but. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of work going forward as, as always with our golf games. Uh, but speaking of the Zurich Classic Week, uh, fun week, as I've said, team work week, uh, week where they try different things. They had some walkout music. Was it only for Saturday? Only for Saturday. Only for so, Saturday. you know, you make the cut, you have a little walkout song. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. I mean, I, you said we said for the weekend last week, I, I didn't know they were just going to do it just for that one day. I guess, you know, hey. They cut it. The PJ Tour, like we were saying, they cut it uh, if they don't need it, really. So, but it was fun to to see the song choices. It's fun to see the whole week. Uh, Daryl, uh, what's your thoughts? You were you're on there on location for you know a couple of days and walked the course. What's your thoughts? Course, this this is my fourth time here. Mm-hmm. The course was in the best condition I've seen it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just it was great to be in the weather. Yes. The weather from you know, from when we got here till the end of the tournament has just been great. Normally there's at least one day to two days of, you know, inclement weather Mm -hmm. delays. And there was none of that this week. It just smooth sailing Mm -hmm. and a great tournament overall. Like I said, Zurich classic, definitely some, I I like being here. Like this is, this is, there's a couple tournaments. We'll probably get into it at some other time, but there's a couple tournaments on the schedule. Not much that you, you don't favor. This is definitely not one of them that you don't look forward to. Yeah. This one you do at least look forward to. And you to. eat well here. So oh, that's, yeah. that's for me, it's, I'm all about that. And we got a little crawfish in you. Crawfish mm-hmm. in me, yep. A little boot and ball today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the weather, I would say that's the best weather I've ever seen in the best weather. The only, the only bad day today was today when we tried to <laughs> When we actually tried to play, even yesterday when we played, we got a little 10 minute sprinkle as you do in Louisiana, a little pop up shower. But we did get it in on that. And, yeah, the weather at the Zurich was was picture perfect. I think it was 70 degrees, windy. Uh, I volunteered for the first two days. Like I was on three green and uh, four uh, fairway. So those shot link data then, uh, that was all me. Uh, but no, the uh, shot link uh, volunteering was very enjoyable. Uh, it was cool to see uh, all the players up close and personal. It's been a few years since I've been because of COVID and whatnot. We didn't have a tournament in 2020. So it's good to see them up close and personal again and yeah, the course was was flush. It was it was really nice. It's probably the best I've ever seen TPC Louisiana, and um, yeah, the technology with Shotlink has, has improved. So before you would they would do like kind of a laser on the green. Now they have cameras set up around the green for that tablet. All you have to do for my job was to confirm or deny whether it is where it is. And oh. shoot, ninety percent of the time the cameras caught it. So really, my job was to sit there and watch golf tap the screen once or twice <laughs> each so hole. It's, it's, so yeah. it's, it's evolved in the past couple of yeah. years since yeah. you, oh, that's great. Yeah. So the, the technology is great. Uh, you do still use a little laser on, on the, uh, the fairways, but I mean, even that, that's actually like almost like, you know, in a computer direct connection, uh, the old school correct way to do it. So that, that works too. And uh, it was interesting. I did it on the alternate shot that 
you know, all the players were kind of conservative. They didn't want to put their partners in harm's way. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, the only group that went kind of in trouble was the, the leading group was Scheffler. Uh, so we had up close and personal thing there. But uh, as far as the championship goes, uh, we have a record setting uh, couple winners. Mr. Xander Shoffley is back as a winner and Patrick Cantlay, uh, that team. Surprise, winners. surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the class of the field. Yeah. You know um thoughts on them i know we were playing while they were doing it but i think highlights. you know that they're just good individual players and when you put them on a team it's just you know they, they've had that chemistry already you know they play a bunch of practice rounds together amazing friends and you know all the teams that you know that they are together on mm-hmm. president's cup or the Ryder cup they're they're just a team to be you know, reckon with and mm-hmm. moving forward, it's definitely going to be, I think that's going to be U.S.'s like kill squad yeah. or, you know, a team whenever they need a assassin a, a point. Correct. <laughs> so that's again, great tournament, mm-hmm. weather, everything, like I said, well-deserved mm-hmm. surprise, surprise, yeah, surprise, surprise. I mean, they shot 25 under in the best ball, 59 and a 60. Uh, and they didn't do too bad in the it's alternate shot yeah, either. Yeah. I mean, what four hundred and an even, you know, and that they they could have easily cleaned that up too. And, uh, shout out also to Billy Horschel and my boy Sam Burns coming in second. Made a little charge, but they tried. I mean, when you're five shots back against that crew, Cantlay and Shoffley, it's just that's tough, as they say. Um, but yeah, I mean, they had a great showing. Uh, I think Riley and Zalatoris had a good showing on the last day. They got a little top ten action. Um, yeah, a lot of good. Pairing teams, the ones the surprise, surprise, you know, the, the big name teams, they actually showed up this week for mm-hmm, once, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Giggle and Grace is a solid team. They showed up. Um, so, yeah, it, it, for your Zerk fan, like I am, a hometown uh, event, this is exactly what you know, perfect weather, big names, uh, golf is back, you know, no restrictions as far as COVID or anything anymore. So, it, it was good to be back. And uh, I'm just proud that uh, we were able to show – Daryl, you're a good time, and it seems like yeah, everyone yeah. had a smooth, nice time at the Zurich and in New Orleans. It's a good time to be in New Orleans. Uh, you know, shout out to my Pelicans. They, yeah, they, they were, were here well. Friday night, and yeah. so a bunch of guys were super excited about that as well. Yeah, so New Orleans, it's emitting great vibes yeah. at the moment. So, uh, you know, just embrace the the vibes with us, uh, podcast fans. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was the week that was in the Zurich. Uh, hopefully we'll have many more with you, you no, here. I mean, definitely yeah. look forward to it. It's going to be know. a tradition like brought, no other. Yeah. Brought the sticks. <laughs> it was a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll, we'll hit that. We'll get that course. Beaver Creek. Shout out to yeah. you. Uh, we, we got rained out and we got two holes in, but we'll get that course in next time that you're here. Uh, but yeah, that's the week that was with Zurich classic. We will flip the page. Imagine me changing my background to something in Mexico. Cause it is the national open, the Mexico open uh it's been around since 1944 it is a newer technically a newer event on the pga tour uh it it's been a pga tour latino event it's been a corn Ferry tour event uh but it's brand new to the pga tour schedule uh daryl i know you don't have much experience uh there because it's a brand new thing brand new event brand new thing and uh we listeners will be back to the regular program schedule next week <laughs> So you'll see, you know, the background of, you know, even if it was a new event, we'd figure out a way and Peter would figure out a way. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I do know, a new event, they say from the couple guys that I've heard, it's in great shape. Mm -hmm. Obviously they've been prepping for this. Very exciting to be a PGA event. Uh, The only downside I've heard about it all is some inside is, you know, the, the heads, the sprinkler heads aren't marked. Ah. So caddies are going to definitely have their work cut out for them this week. So I know Monday and Tuesday, speaking to the couple guys that I know, uh, they have a lot of work to mm. do this week. So again, all good new course and everybody has to do it. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's not like it's just, you know, typically, but I remember my first year on the PJ tour, mm-hmm. we had to see all the courses. So I had to go do all, you know, mm-hmm. my, my own personal prep work and how I felt, you know, what I needed to do to get prepared. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a level playing field because there's been guys that have been there for years. This week is level playing field everyone. and everybody, you know, just has to 
go get their work done. Buck up, buckaroo. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you remember any uh, event where it was kind of like this, where you were there and it was completely new for everyone? So last year, the replacement for the RBC uh, yeah. uh, Heritage, the Congregate Congregate. event. event. Uh, that one was, was definitely one that stood out that everybody, uh, you know, didn't know anything. And then mm-hmm. the other one that stood out was in 2017 mm-hmm. again they're doing it or a replacement again for wells fargo oh uh, yeah in 2017 right. they went to eagle point mm-hmm. and that was a great golf course mm-hmm. same thing yeah. Every, everybody goes in blind gotta go do your work mm-hmm. take your time the difference is i'm sure those heads were well marked yeah. compared to the heads this week so yeah it's ultimately i think it's a good thing because Again, level playing field. Mm-hmm. You don't know how it plays, so everybody's mm-hmm. in that learning curve together. Yeah. Um, so I guess talk us to that process as far as like caddying. And it's the first week there, so you're pretty much going to be walking the course. So you're taking notes. Do you bring a scope out? And things like so that? I mean, if how I pers- everybody does that has their own little you know mm-hmm. spice and sprinkle the things. Mm-hmm. For me, I would personally walk the golf course just all eighteen, just kind of get a feel for the land. Mm-hmm maybe mark, you know, a minor thing or two. Mm-hmm. I won't do any heads, mm-hmm. but I'll mark, you know, make sure the bunker runouts are good and the covers and, mm-hmm. you know, I'll do that, you know, fairly quickly. And then I'll be able to play 18 with my pro mm-hmm. typically on Tuesday. Yeah. Typically you'll play early on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And then after Tuesday, we play our 18. I'll also do some work mm-hmm. while we're, you know, when he's chipping, I'll kind of do whatever I need to do. And while it, and those rounds on Tuesdays are typically slow. Mm-hmm. So while everybody's hitting, you have enough time to double check numbers, mm-hmm. do that. And then typically when I'm done, I'll eat lunch and, you know, practice with my pro. And normally I'll either ask to leave early so I can walk one more time the golf course, mm-hmm. or if by, you know, default, he finishes early. If he's in the pro on the next day, yeah. we'll finish the day, you know, maybe at around two, mm-hmm three o'clock. So that gives me one more roundabout yeah. to just kind of like get myself as prepared as I can be. Yeah. You try to be a, as thorough as possible. Yeah. As I can. mean, you're never gonna, you're never going to be complete, but at least you're complete enough to, you know, make some calls out there that, you know, he, he trusts you on yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, so. like the time where y'all normally, like if you're at the Zurich, you're just with them hitting golf balls and range or something, right. but you're actually out there thinking of the course. Yeah. Cause you just need that extra time to prepare. And I know you were talking about like, uh, before we got on an air about how, like you never feel like you're ever, ever enough. Like you just, there's no. just so much that you there's can't always, do. there's always, there's always extra. There's always more that you can do mm-hmm. at the same time. There's, I don't know. Again, you might be able to overdo it, but I think you can, everybody has their own different routine. Yeah. So whatever makes you comfortable and mm-hmm. you to be able to do your job in your best ability, you got to do what you got to do. Right. Yeah. Some guys won't do it. Some guys will do more than I, how I do it. Yeah. And some guys will do less than how mm-hmm. I prepare. So it just depends on what makes them comfortable. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, no, it's a, uh... Interesting when you go to the new golf course. I mean, I'm sure not a lot, a lot of golfers can relate out there. I mean, you playing Santa Maria yesterday, you know, yeah. it, it, going in blind can be frightening, but also you don't have the scar tissue. No scar tissue. Yeah, really. uh, going, so you're kind of just flinging away. You can kind of easily commit more. You're like, all I have is my game, so I might as well just trust it. Um, so, yeah, it said, by the way, it said, Vedant- <laughs> sorry if I mispronounce this, uh, Vedante Viarta. Be- I believe is what the course's name is. And it's a, it's a long course, 7,400. Yeah. R 71, Greg Norman design. Uh, so it, and they, I actually just read here that they added like 51 new bunkers to the course. I haven't even seen, I haven't seen any pictures. We're all going blind here. I'm sure golf channel is going blind too. So uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. I'm, I, I want to see the course. It's, I think it's in a resort from my ears so. yeah no there's i know a, a bunch of guys are taking like a little boat ride to get to the golf <laughs> course like a 20 30 minute boat ride so yeah you know it, it definitely it'll be yeah I, i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch yeah. it so it, check it out because you never know if i need to you know go one day or not go one day so mm-hmm. we'll, we'll figure it out yeah we're gonna wear that novelty out this week with it so yeah and that's another thing you yeah, have the the little logistics things with like 
y'all had this you know shuttle shuttle on a boat yeah 20 minutes uh in mexico that's that's just i mean i know that's not normal no and uh, that just adjusts your your it's schedule just, you it's know just what, but it's just what you do yeah you gotta do what you gotta do uh if, if you can't just park right next to your player and just walk out this week but gotta do what you gotta do um gonna be interesting with our picks here uh when we get to it uh as far as uh Who's going to do well? It's complete crapshoot. Uh, so I guess without further ado, you want to just jump right into it? Sure. Let's let's get it. Let's get it. All righty. Uh, so happy to have you back on the picks. Speaking of the picks, so I did like the curse is still alive, Daryl. Uh, one of, of my, course it is. But my winner pick withdrew. Like, I, I feel like that's like four of the last five times yeah, someone withdrew with our pick. So we're going to keep shooting. Yeah. Shoot or shoot, shoot like or they shoot. say, and we're going to keep shooting. Yeah, so uh, more Kyle and them that at least made the cut. So that that's that's good. Uh, but as far as uh, this week, I guess I'll start us off. My dark horse pick actually won here in twenty eight. Not here in this course, but the Mexico Open mm. in twenty eighteen. Uh, Austin Smotherman. Whoa! Yeah, this is how much of a crapshoot this is going to be. Uh, you, you did a little bit of research there, though. I, I love it. I, I did. Yeah, I was looking at the past winners. I was like, oh. I know that name. Oh, he's in the field. So let's just go with that. <laughs> he's a uh, 125 to one, according to CBS odds, which are down below. If you want to look at that. Um, he's also, I, I remember he's a first tee dude. So two times he went to the nature Valley first tee open uh, twice. You have your best week of your life type of thing. And well, he's now he's on tour. So he's having his best week of his life every week. So hopefully this is, is, is another best week getting that first W uh, as my dark host pick. Yeah. He won in 2018. Different golf course. That was in Tijuana. I'm sure they had a great time there. And that was during the PGA Tour Latina America uh, event then. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't really know much of his game. I know uh, he keeps it in play relatively well. And, uh, you know, can go off his ball as a rookie from the Corn Ferry uh, last year. So, yeah, that, that's my crapshoot answer for my dark horse. Crap, crapshoot with the dark horse. <laughs> So, I mean, other 25 to 1, I guess. I, didn't, uh, I mean, that's definitely, you know, there's, it's not a, a total crapshoot because you did your, your research there mm-hmm. and he won in 2018, like you said. Mm-hmm. Mine definitely feels like it, but I'm going to give some, I'm going to go at 150 to 1. I'm going Robert Streb. Okay. I just no. think yeah. he's very, at, at that, at that rate, I was like, you know, I'm going to take this guy, mm-hmm. you know, he's a veteran guy and just figures out a way to get things done. He's never really been in danger of, you know, losing a, a car mm-hmm. or, you know, he, he always has his good stretches and I think he hasn't had a good stretch this year. And mm-hmm. I think we can start here. Yeah. And again, at 150 to one, it was a no brainer for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like him and his dude are veteran dudes. So I think they're going to go get the work done and know how to dissect this golf course. Mm-hmm. And go from there. Yeah, no, that's a solid pick. I like, I like the vet. He's usually, you, you kind of see him when he contends. He generally contends up there and yeah. wins. Yeah. So that that's a good thing. And then other, other than that, you don't really see him. But he's a solid vet, like you said. And yeah, I think that's a solid pick. Under fifty to one is pretty solid for for his odds as well. Um, yeah, good good pick. I think uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go with my uh, contender pick. This was. Uh, there's some decent names because we did talk about the length. You know, I see Cameron Champ there at 50 to one, but I'm going to go to a guy a couple below him who's been playing really well. Like I've talked about how he was a part of a team that uh, went in the top 10, little backdoor top 10 this week and almost won the Valspar championship. Mr. Davis Riley. Uh, tough for me to choose a Bama boy, but this dude is uh he's a player and he's yep. one of those young guns that I think is about to I'll step up and get a, a, a W uh, like a mini Justin Thomas, beautiful swing. And yeah, he's playing well right now. I, I, don't, see, I don't see why he, sh- he shouldn't get this one done. You know, this seems like Mexico open. Uh, I, I would imagine they're trying to make this kind of like, you know, how the Canadian open. They're yeah. trying to get both sides of uh, North America here, you know, like, as well as, you know, the U.S. open smashed in between them. So, yeah, I think uh, Davis Riley is a good pick, 50 to 1. Oh, yeah. It's my contender pick. Love it. I mean, yeah. he's definitely trending. And I think sometimes when you have the week he had in Tampa, I think it just kind of gives you the confidence and gives you validation that, hey, I can do it. And it's just mm-hmm. given more opportunities to 
keep doing it moving forward. For me, I think I'm going to go with a guy that's 60 to one. We've talked about him before. And I think mm. he's just, if, if, if we're talking length, he, he has the length and I think he has control of his golf game. And he's, he's been knocking here or there. And I'm going to go back to the well in a sense. I'm going to Heath the Gala. There it is. You know, I'm just, I, again, I think this is a, a field for him to take advantage of and nobody ball striker, new golf course. And I think him being a rookie, yeah. everything's all new. So new golf course to him, new golf course to everybody. Yeah. So it's, it's totally level playing field. So I think he's going to be like, you know what? Like I'm, I have just as much advantage as everybody else here compared to going every week to week. And most guys have been the golf course. Yeah. So I definitely like this guy at 60 to one. Yeah. So love let's, let, some, let's go. We love us some Sahith the gala. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's kind of a veteran in the sense that he's used to doing this new thing every week. Yeah. And so he, it's like, yeah, just another week for him, another new week. And everyone else is like, ah, what do we do? Yeah. Uh, so it's just normal. And he's got certainly the skill set. He, he had one of the closest ones on, uh, <laughs> on three, uh, when I was there, unfortunately his partner missed it, but you know, everyone knows he's got the game and, you know, kind of like Davis Riley, he's one of those guys, young guns who uh, is knocking on the door trying to get that first W and I don't see why he shouldn't get it here. I was eyeing him as well, uh, but you know, I'm glad you did pick him. So he's, he's in our well, uh, he's in our picks. Hopefully Sahith, we didn't curse you there. I'm trying to win. So let's <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah. We're, we're going for the win. Uh, as far as our actual W our winner pick, by the way, John Rom is in the field. Uh, he's the strong favorite at five to one. Uh, I'm not going to go with him, but uh, I, I'd probably be a fool, but I'm not going with him. But I'm going to go a little bit more down the list. A guy who is a winner and a, ma- a major winner at that. Uh, he's been struggling lately, but I'm going to go Patrick Reed. Um, what is he here? He's 25 to 1. Uh, so they, he won the Mexico Championship where it was a WGC uh, event. What was that 2019, I believe? Yeah, yeah, like a couple years ago, yeah. Yeah, so uh, good vibes in Mexico. I mean, I'm going with the good vibes in Mexico thing. Um, Patrick Reed, yeah, he's been struggling with the ball striking. The tax slayer, the formerly. tax Neymar. slayer. I showed you where uh, he practiced. That was yeah. golf course well, growing up. Uh, yeah, that's where he, he honed his chipping game, as uh, as we know he, he's known for. And, yeah, Patrick Reed struggling. I do have a, a record with Patrick Reed as – as far as, you know, predicting his success in my David Ledbetter video, I, I said he was going to win with David Ledbetter and he did. Uh, no, I don't think he's still with David Ledbetter, no. but uh, you know, at least I predicted that. So good vibes on at least picking him. Uh, so yeah, I think Patrick Reed, he usually gets at least one win a year. I think, I guess, you know, going back to Mexico might be getting that uh, good vibes up for him. Uh, thoughts on that. Thoughts on your winner pick, Daryl. I think Patrick Reed is just solid, mm-hmm. solid pick in general on it. He can, I've, I've been lucky to be able to be in a couple groups of them and he can get out of jail from like almost anywhere. Mm-hmm. We we're with him and Tory Pines one year and you know, that rough is juicy, juicy. Mm-hmm. And it was a sight to see watching him chip the ball and pitch the ball and mm-hmm. just around the greens and just the, the, the drive that he has that he doesn't care if he misses it there, he's getting it up and down. So it's definitely cool to see him. Patrick Reed, great pick. Yep. As for me, I'm just, it's the Mexico open. I oh. think you want to see a guy from Mexico win it, a, a guy that I think is very good. And I think he knows the golf course. So that's, I'm sure he knows the golf course. I don't know that officially, mm. but I feel he's from there. So I'm going Abraham answer. There it is. So, Again, another guy that is a very good short game. Mm-hmm. I think based on my experience, experiences really, I think the guys that stand out from when it comes to chipping are like a Patrick Reed, mm-hmm. Abraham Answer, Luke Donald, and Phil Mickelson. Like those mm-hmm. four guys specifically come to mind when it comes to, you know, chipping and seeing them. Honorable mention is David Lipsky. Mm. He's definitely – Another guy that I think if you watch his motion and watch how his ball reacts to chipping and it's those, those guys stand out for me that I, I definitely love to watch and 
basically copy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I saw actually I saw Lipsky and I was thinking of you when uh, he was on the third hole. He was just left of the hole and he threw his chip up there and it sucked. You know, back. Oh, oh, so yeah. So you've seen some of that live, live in person, right in front of me, right in my face. He yeah. basically posterized me with it, uh, and he was in contention as Zerk. So yeah, good shout out there. I mean, they finished fourth. Yeah, they, he was. He, they were up there. Yeah. Him and uh, Rye. Was yeah, Rye? Aaron Rye. Yeah, Aaron Rye, who is also good odds here. By the way, shout out to him. Um, yeah, I like Abraham Answers the pick there. I mean, that's a you know we're just going with the Mexico vibes, you know. And I think again, like. <laughs> He's just going to be excited. Yeah. They, I'm sure they've circled this on the schedule. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a major to them. Yeah. You know, so this is what they wake up for. Mm-hmm. He, he's going to have plenty of fans out there. For plenty sure. of fans. Yeah. And I'm sure that's why Ra, I know Rom's uh, from Spain, but like, you know, it, that the culture, Spanish, that the same culture. culture. Yeah. So I'm sure he's going to have a lot of fans too. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to ride that wave. And as, as you should, you know, if we're playing the Filipino Open as a PJ Tour event, we're. You know, we're we're, we're going to go, you know, rattle up the fans and yeah. then try to win that thing. So that yeah, answer, uh, good pick, great iron player, you know. Great iron player. player. And uh, Again, I've been around him and I – Reed, Mickelson, mm. Cancer, Lipsky, Donald. Those are my pitching, chipping guru mm-hmm. type of – that's who I love to watch. Try to morph your chipping to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah, those are picks. He's 20 to one, by the way. He's second in the odds. Um, again, we're going in blind, so we're don't know. Blind. To... Everybody's going in blind. Yeah, so I think maybe that'll be that'll be the key for us too. You know, maybe that'll crack it. Who knows? We've we've tried to defy logic. We've tried to use logic. Who knows? However, yeah, we're gonna keep, <laughs> we're, again. We're gonna keep shooting. Yeah, we're gonna keep shooting. So, uh, so another fun one uh, this week in Mexico. You have any? Uh, I mean. Yeah, obviously didn't build it in any memories in Mexico in general. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Okay. I haven't, I haven't been over there. So just haven't had the opportunity, but moving forward, we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think, let's see, been to Mexico, went to a cruise, shout out with the, the Knox, the cousins, uh, went to Costa Maya. Okay. And, uh, shoot, what was, there was another, another one I can't think of, but yeah. Uh, good vibes. Yeah, you know, there there's not just taco stands just all over the place. Like you Although would I would love to hang out by yeah, one of those. I, I would like a, an authentic Mexico taco, but they do have beautiful beach, beaches there. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> more ways than one. And uh, I think this one is actually near kind of a, you know, it's in the resort. I think it has kind of some beaches as well. It's in like the heart of Mexico in a sense almost. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've got good vibes in Mexico. I, I never, you know, have anything against it. Uh, Maybe just go visit this tournament one day. Who knows? Right, right, <laughs> you know? right. you might as well. Uh, so yeah, this was this event, in 1944. You know, they've actually got some winners here from uh, in the past. I was looking here, like Ben Crenshaw, uh, Lee Trevino, the Mary Max baby. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a PJ Tour event, but I guess you know they went over and wanted to play it. Stuart Sink apparently won here in 1996. So they've got some names on here that that won it. You know, Fred Funk. Uh, Jay Huzz, who, by the way, in Missouri, oldest player to ever make the cut. How about that? Him and uh, Bill Haas. Um, so yeah, they got some some people that won here. Stuart Singh actually won here twice. So I don't I don't know. Uh, apparently, you know, they they got something going down there. So I, I'm excited to watch. You know, it's a blind event, so it, it makes you just just kind of curious naturally. So I uh, hope you guys will be watching as well as we will be. Um, anything else, Daryl, that you got for us? No, it's, I definitely want to see the golf course on TV. I've seen some posts with some buddies, mm-hmm. caddies, and the course looks in amazing shape. So we'll see how it turns out. Right on, right on. So, uh, yeah, great to have you again here. I don't know when we'll be able to do another in-person podcast, but this is – This has been great. Absolutely a, a blessing to have yeah, you here I know, for this past week. And, uh yeah, you know, you know what to do, guys. Uh, you know, comment below who's your winner for the uh, Abierto Mexicano de Golf. That's as good as the Spanish you're going to get from me. Apologies if I made your ears bleed, my uh, Spanish audience. But uh, yeah, you know what to do, audience. Who's your winner? Uh, any memories in Mexico that you can think of? Thoughts on the Zero Classic, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment below. 
uh, you know, your word means something to us.